Have you ever had something stolen from you? I mean, it can leave you feeling vulnerable, embarrassed, mad, frustrated. Well, that's what happened to me. But before I tell you how that happened, I, I want you to know how you can partner with Hope to improve people's lives. Just last week, the people at Hope got hundreds and hundreds of gifts, Christmas gifts, for children in a local school. They're also raising money for five local agencies that care for struggling families and individuals. It's called Operation Hope. And you can be a part of that by using any of these three safe and secure ways to give. Another opportunity for you is just by clicking the subscribe, like, or share buttons below. You can spread hope to others. Now, let's get into it. This is the third week in our series, The Heart of Christmas, and today we're looking at what the coming of Jesus brought us, which is found in John chapter 2, verse 10. It says, the angel's talking to the shepherds out in the field. They're kind of freaked out because they just saw an angel, and the angel said, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. With Jesus comes joy, but why don't we always feel joy? It kind of eludes us at times. Well, let's take a deeper look. I was in a subway in Mexico City, and it was packed. And when I got off the train, I went to get a Coke and reached in my back pocket, my wallet, and it was gone. Well, being a pastor, I calmly paused and prayed. No, I didn't do that. No way. I freaked out, started checking every pocket, but it was gone. It's a terrible feeling. But I'm partially to blame because I didn't take any precautions uh, to my surroundings. I, I should have probably put my wallet in a more secure place, like maybe duct tape it to my body. See, remember the movie, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas? The townspeople were all going about their business, totally unaware that the Grinch was about to steal something so dear to them. Sometimes it takes something being stolen from us to realize what's really important. For them, they discovered that it wasn't the trappings that made them feel hopeful or peaceful or loved or joyful. In fact, those four words are major feelings that Christmas gifts us, but they can be robbed if we don't take precautions, just like my wallet. Well, I want to talk to you today about not giving up your joy. You know, the next time someone cuts you off in tra traffic, don't let joy be taken from you. The next time someone is rude to you in a store, don't let joy be taken from you. You can't find your keys or you're late. Well, don't let joy be taken from you. In fact, Jesus says, no man can take your joy. That means you have control over what happens to it. We can't control what people do and what they say, obviously, but we can control how we respond. So today's message is simple to hear, but it's actually very difficult to apply. We, can, we have to quit giving away our joy. Quit letting the same people upset you. Quit letting the traffic, the delays, the things that don't work out to frustrate you. And by the way, you can't pray these things away. I know, I've tried. Like that person at the office that gets you upset and gets on your nerves. And the fact is that they may not change. They may be that way for the next 10 years. Quit letting their negative comments upset you. Our world is so reactive today about opinions that other people have. Listen, people have the right to their own opinions, even if they're incorrect. Don't let their opinion cause you to give away your joy. 
it's not worth it. Here are some life, you know, you've probably seen these on Pinterest, uh, life's too short comments. Well, here's a couple that might be able to help you. Life is too short to argue with a fool. Life is too short to hold a grudge. Just slash their tires and call it even. Now, I'm not recommending that. That was just on Pinterest. Life is too short for fake butter, cheese, or fake people. Life is too short, so smile while you still have teeth. The point is, life is too short to live frustrated, upset over things that we have no control over. People might not change, but we can change by not giving away our joy. I, I was at a stoplight looking at my phone when the car behind me beeped at me, and I looked up and the light all of a sudden just turned green, and I thought, wow, so rude. Then as I got to the next light, they pulled up next to me and I'm preparing to get into it and say, hey, relax. Well, I looked over and they rolled down the window and I did the same and they yelled out, hi, Pastor Rick. See, I put a big smile on my face and yelled back, hi. See, no one can take our joy, but sometimes we're too quick to give it away. In fact, Jesus says, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but cheer up, for I have overcome the world. Now, that's a great verse because he acknowledges that life many times is going to be up and then it's going to be down. And we're not going to walk around with a big smile on our face all the time. But the solution he's talking about is that our troubles can, be overtake, can overtake us and we can give away our our joy, but he's saying, listen, if you follow me, trust me, since I have overcome, overcome the world, you can live a joy-filled life. Well, research shows that losing your joy will affect your health physically, mentally, as well as spiritually. In fact, the benefits of joy is that it protects your heart, strengthens your immune system, combats stress, reduces pain in your body, that's a good one, increases your life, You'll sleep better, and it helps to reduce your body fat. Now, there's a new resolution for us right there. Get joy back in my life so that all those things will happen. See, God certainly thought so because joy appears in the Bible 430 times compared to happier happiness, which only appears 10 times. Both science and the scripture conclude that joy is lasting and it satisfies the heart in a unique and marvelous way. Let me give you three things that you can do to get back joy this Christmas season and beyond. The first one is start laughing again. A joyful heart is good medicine, Proverbs says. In fact, doctors say that short-term effects of laughter increases endorphins for your brain. It reduces blood pressure, relaxes your muscles, and will reduce your stress. In fact, the long-term effect of laughter is that it will improve your immune system, relief relieve pain and decreases depression, anxiety, and improves your self-esteem. See, when was the last time you had just a great laugh? It's so easy to get caught up in the everyday responsibilities of life and get so serious that we simply don't laugh anymore. Did you know that the average child laughs 150 times a day while adults only laugh three times a day? We need to get that little kid back in our lives and start laughing to get our joy back. Laughter is healing medicine. I heard the story of a lady that hadn't slept really well for years and was consistently uh, having to take medication to even get a little bit of sleep. She was so tired and exhausted. She tried different diets and different medications and different doctors and nothing helped. She was exhausted. She went to a new doctor and he gave an unusual prescription. He told her this, he said, I want every night before you go to bed, I want you to watch a funny movie or a funny comedy, something to make you laugh. Well, she thought that's kind of weird, but she did it anyway, night after night, and she began to notice that she was starting to sleep better. She went back for a checkup and her doctor told her that her whole demeanor had changed. She was more vibrant, up-tempo, spirited, Today, she's off all medication and is sleeping like a baby. The U.S. represents 6% of the world's population, but we take the 90% of the world's tranquilizers. The same thing that you can do to get your joy back is this, is be thankful for the simple things in life. 
Jesus says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Jesus says that he wants you to have a type of joy that overflows. Not just joy, but overflowing joy. How do we do that? The antidote for overflowing joy is being thankful for the simple things in life. You may not have a lot of resources, but if you have family, you're wealthy. If you have your health, you're wealthy. If you can look up at the stars at night, you're wealthy. It's not whether you have a lot or a little. It's all about being thankful for the simple things around you every day that you have maybe taken for granted. Are you recognizing God's blessing, goodness in your life? Are you focusing on what's wrong? Or, or are you, you know, did you allow the life this week just to get away from you and it just robbed you of, of your joy? Paul said in Romans chapter 5, verse 3, let us be full of joy now. Not tomorrow, not when you reach your goal, not when you're, all of a sudden the problems turn around. Now is the time to be full of joy. Now the third way that you can get your joy back is this. Let go of the small things. You know, there are enough big issues in life to deal with. Make sure you're not giving away your joy over some small things. Proverbs says, a relaxed attitude will lengthen your life. When we get up tight and everything's got to be perfect, it, it's got to go your way or on your schedule, and if not, you're going to get all stressed out and let, let that sour your day, we are shortening our life. Minutes turn into hours and hours turn into days. You know, my son Dylan was a great example to me about how not to give away your joy when things happen. He left a message on my phone said, hey, dad, I got in a car accident and I'll call you later. Now, for all you kids out there, I want to help you to understand something that your parents need, full communication. It's really the top priority for all parents. He finally called me back and, and said that the person in front of him stopped on the freeway, so he stopped, but the car behind him hit him, pushing him into the car in front. I said, Dylan, I'm so sorry. And he said, dad, it could have been worse. You know, it's just a car. Everyone is fine. I thought, you're right. The car is a small thing. He, has a he had a relaxed attitude. He didn't allow that accident, the joy, to be taken from him. See, throughout life, there will always be something that will try to take your joy. If it's not a grumpy salesperson, maybe it's going to be someone you work with, maybe it's traffic is backed up, your flight got delayed, or maybe you got in an accident. Let's get back our joy and let's start laughing. Let's start being thankful for the simple things around us and let's let go of the small things. What's upsetting you now doesn't have to upset you anymore. The next time you're tempted to get upset, ask yourself, is this really worth it? Is this really worth me giving up my joy over? If you'll do this and not give away your joy, you'll be happier, more fulfilled, and live longer. God, in fact, promises you'll be strong, you'll have a better relationships, you'll accomplish more, and I believe that you'll have an overflowing life of joy. Well, I hope to see you next week, either online or on campus.